Now, I would like to open up the evening to questions. Uh, Courtney uh, has a microphone here, so I'll try to call on people. If there's one of our speakers who you'd like to address your question to specifically, please feel free to do that. If not, you can request, uh, request a general response, and I'm sure one of them will, will happily volunteer. So um, if you raise your hands, uh, somebody will come over and bring you the microphone. Um, this gentleman right here, Courtney. Um, I'll address the question to Dr. Norris. Um, many times, uh, emergency treatment starts at home when the uh, paramedics come. And you haven't really addressed uh, that procedure from uh, the uh, paramedics to the uh, ER. Um, are there improvements that we're making in that area, or uh, could, you, could you address that? Uh, I did mention that um, that uh, we have Dr. Gilbert, who is for San Mateo, San Mateo County, the EMS director, and we work we work very closely with Santa Clara County EMS as well, obviously, um, and we do quite a bit of, of training and teaching of the pre-hospital care providers uh, in those roles, um, and I, there is a, sort of a continuous process going on there as well for improving. Uh, response times for improving protocols and enhancing uh, the abilities of the pre-hospital care providers. So there, there is indeed work always ongoing uh, to facilitate the pre-hospital side of this as well. Gentlemen, We're involved in with a lot of the research in that regard. So, you know, our faculty members are very interested in pre-hospital care. So anytime there's an advance in emergency care, there's almost uh, an immediate evaluation to see whether or not that can be applied in a pre-hospital setting um, so that we can expedite care. So um, it's not just about driving fast. Um, it's about, um, you know, uh, recognition of difficult problems. Um, so the pre-hospital care providers play a very, very important role. There's a lot of work in both counties right now, um, for example, developing stroke centers. Um, and developing EMS protocols for what centers they will use as the destination to take a patient who, who the paramedics feel is having, for example, signs and symptoms that may not, not always be clear cut, but could be a stroke. Uh, similarly, for example, Santa Clara County is just instituting this summer uh, a similar protocol for uh, emergency cardiac patients who may be having a heart attack, delivering them to centers that can immediately intervene. Um, so all these kinds of things are, are continuously uh, being worked on in the counties. This gentleman in, in the back. I had a question about electronic medical records and uh, how you can access records of our history. For example, if I arrive at the ER and I'm non-communicative, can you determine what medicines I'm taking, what I'm allergic to, what my medical history is, and things of that nature? That is the hope that, that once the emergency medical record is fully up and, and operating and, and the database is fully built, that that is exactly what will happen. Uh, Stanford has done a great job in trying to go back and load prior data on there, but um, not every patient that comes through our doors will have a record in there yet. Uh, but over time, those records will be, that database will be built, uh, and that's exactly the kind of thing we want to be able to do, is be able to identify the patient and then know exactly what their medical problems are, what medications they take, what allergies they've had in the past, all these kinds of things are, are very important for us to know. Uh, this lady here in the front. Uh, does, uh, does a personal physician have access to uh, what happened in the medical, in the emergency department of his or her patient? If, if I went to the emergency department and, and was treated for some sort of heart problem, could my primary care physician get that record? The physician certainly can get that record, and as, as the new electronic medical record is being um, developed, uh, there's access, for example, Palo Alto Clinic. A lot of physicians on Welch Road are gaining access, uh, and that's becoming easier and easier. It really depends upon whether the physician has, has ties to Stanford and is part of that, that uh, process. Uh, even physicians who are not part of Stanford, however, that can get uh, information from the, um, fr 
regarding the visit that the patient had in the, in the emergency department. That was one area that we really had hoped would be improved by EPIC, and we, we think that it really will be, because communications have been difficult in the past. Getting that kind of information to primary care providers, I think, was an area where we weren't doing as well as we should. Um, this lady here in the front row. Is it appropriate now for us to ask our primary care physician to get uh, connected to the new system here? If your physician has an affiliation with Stanford, I believe that that is, that is currently the case, that they can become, um, they can gain access to the electronic medical record system. Okay. Yes. Um, I had another question. Oh, I, when you were speaking, Dr. Norris, I think I understood that you said that some emergency room was not open uh, 365 days a year, only 364. Was that in California? No, no, I was implying that, that the emergency departments are open every day of the year. Everywhere? Uh, yes. Okay. If, if you're a licensed emergency department, you're required to be open 24-7 every day of the year. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this lady to be followed by the lady behind her. You've been uh, compelling in, in describing the pressures on the existing emergency rooms. Um, so I'm wondering how uh, you ever could really react to a mass emergency situation through an earthquake or whatever. That's a really good question. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll take one. You want to take that one? Yeah, I'll, I'll take, take away it. Um, well, um, it, <laughs> yeah, um, it, it would be difficult in certain circumstances. I mean, the hospital actually has um, one of the better disaster plans in the state, um, and it was created um, between multiple disciplines, emergency medicine, um, hospital administration, the surgery department. Um, so there's, there is a disaster plan in place um, which would um, clear out as much of the hospital as could be cleared out, um, partition off the hospital into different types of treatment areas depending on the nature of the disaster. So, you know, if you have an earthquake um, and you have multiple victims who are trauma victims, that's different from a situation of, say, a um, a killer infectious disease where you have to isolate people, all right? So different sorts of disasters. The emergency department would get overwhelmed very quickly. So, um, you know, we only have the capacity that we have. Um, so uh, forget about a big disaster, a big earthquake, just a multi-vehicle uh, accident um, gets us pretty full pretty quickly. So, um, but there, there are contingencies in place to open additional areas, call down additional staff, et cetera. Um, at, when we get a new emergency department, um, that won't give us the ability to manage 100,000 people at a time, but it will certainly help us uh, manage uh, the predictable and inevitable uh, catastrophic events that will occur here. I mean, we're going to have an earthquake sooner or later. I mean, uh, it's just going to happen, and, and having um, a bigger facility is going to help us um, deal with it. But when you talk about a, a large disaster, such as what just happened in China or um, a big flood, um, et cetera, then you're talking about uh, a very broad-ranging uh, response that goes beyond the capacity of the emergency department, the hospital, and it's a multi-hospital, multi-system response. And we are prepared for that. We hope we don't have to invoke it, but. We, we are prepared for that. The, I think we had a second question behind. Okay. In regard to uh, communication, I was wondering if the patients will be able to um, get their own records, to be online to get their own records at the hospital. So there, there is actually a component of the EPIC system um, that has been discussed tonight that is a patient-related system. And the plans for that are very much uh, in process but will be a phased um, rollout. 
So the answer is yes, and hopefully we'll be able to provide you with um, more thorough information about that in the months ahead, but the system does have that functionality.